this is OSI reference model or TCP IP reference model which is shown to you. The one which you can see on your screen is it OSI reference model or TCP reference model? Oh, did you have a lecture of Shefali Madam or Shetal Madam who has talked about uh, TCP IP reference model and OSI reference model, the differences between them, function of each layer, is it done? Yes, so OSI has seven layers and TCP has four layers. TCP IP rather, the name of the protocol suit is TCP IP Kevin. So can you very quickly tell me, anyone, unmute yourself and tell me, which are the seven layers of OSI reference model starting from top? Like the first one is application layer, then everyone. application layer, presentation layer, session layer, transport layer, network layer, data link layer and then physical layer. Please remember these names very clearly and if we talk about TCP ARP reference model then which are the layers? Kevin you won't answer now, others will answer. Starting from top, which are the four layers in TCP ARP reference model? Yes, application layer, then transport layer, then internet layer. Some people say that is internet layer, some people say that is host to network layer, and then you have which is the lowest layer? Is it link link? Okay. So that is more or less same as, no. Okay. So that is more or less same as having application layer, transport layer, then network layer. And we have data link layer and physical layer combined. In host to network layer, we are having data link layer and physical layer combined. So on the one hand, we said that we should have modular approach so that every task can be clearly categorized. Like if you're coming across a new routing algorithm. Now routing is a process which finds out the best route available. R-O-U-T-E. Root means path. Like when your source is sending data to the destination, then multiple paths will be available. So which one is better at the moment that will be decided that path or that route will be decided by an algorithm which is known as routing algorithm. Some people call it routing algorithm. So whatever you say, uh, can anyone tell me the routing algorithm uh, of which layer that is a part of? Yes, network layer. So now if let us say someone is inventing a fabulous uh, routing algorithm which is better than all the existing routing algorithms. So if we didn't have layers, at that point of time, I'll have to look at the entire code, entire program and then I'll see that which module is to be changed and where all it is affecting. But if you have a modular approach, then it will be very easy for me. I know that, okay, here is the network layer and I can change this routing algorithm as long as it is still taking data from the upper layer and if it is sending correct data to the lower layer. If it is getting data and giving data in the form in which they are expecting, internally we can change it. So to replace something, to debug something, to implement it, to understand it will be very easy if we have clear layers for the separate task. That is why we had layers. And then in TCP IP reference model, we are combining two layers, data link layer and physical layer.
so that is in a way contradictory and that is one of the critique of tcpa preference model which i believe madam has already taught you so in order to study all the layers very thoroughly we are going to learn a hybrid model it is neither a pure osi reference model nor tcpa reference model we are going to have application layer transport layer network layer data link layer and physical layer so whenever we say host to network layer you can probably combine these two layers layer 1 and layer 2 but we need to know internally that ideally this is the part of the data link layer and this is the part of the physical layer so that is how we are going to learn so your chapters are organized like this first chapter is introduction then physical layer then data link layer and there is one specific category of data link layer for some specific tasks that is known as max sub layer that is your next chapter then network layer then transport layer application layer and at then security that is how our book is organized anyway so now onwards we are going to follow that there are five layers and this is you know more or less tcpa preference model so we can say that we are going to learn the tcpa preference model because in the internet the internet when i say that means we are talking about internet where all of us are connected right now in the internet tcpa preference model is implemented osi is just in theory and not widely accepted and why is it not expect, accepted that also probably either madam has covered or shell cover so we are going to focus on this now i think i can ask you some questions based on the last class so everyone let it be very clear in our mind which is layer 2 here when i say layer 2 which layer are we talking about yes data link layer nice layer 4 is transport layer true and layer 3 is network layer and which is the lowest layer the bottom most layer physical layer and the top most layer that is application layer nice so now answer me that network layer gets data from which layer yes transport layer if you are talking about the transmitter and if you are talking about the receiver then data link layer harsh internet layer and network layer they are synonyms of each other like internet protocol that is the main protocol ip internet protocol is at the network layer so some people say that is you know internet pro layer or some people say that is network layer so both of them are synonyms of each other so we say that at the receiver it is getting data from the data link layer network layer gets data from the data link layer at the receiver and who provides services to the network layer at the receiver and who provides services to the network layer at the transmitter the telling layer always remember lower layer provides services to the upper layer and for that if you forget then remember this analogy which we used in last time that assistant provides services to the manager and secretary provides services to the uh, assistant and courier provides services to the reception doesn't matter whether we are talking about the transmitter or the receiver data flows downward at the transmitter it flows upward at the receiver however always layer k provides services to layer k plus 1 and layer k utilize services of layer k minus 1 which is true for both the ends for all the computers 
always layer k uses services of k minus 1 and it provides services to k plus 1. However, if it is a transmitter, then data flows downward. If it is a receiver, data flows upward. So, through interface, service is provided. And when we say protocol, then all layer case follow the same protocol. They understand the same language, they do the same job. Like if we are talking about the receptionist, then what is the job of this to get the orders, send the couriers, to receive the couriers and pass on the orders. Similarly, when reply comes, then this one is receiving the courier and checking it and giving the data over here. The manager, they schedule the meeting, they make the decision. Those are the jobs which they do. Similarly, if you are talking about application layers, then some protocols of the application layer are SMTP, FTP, HTTP. So layer 3 doesn't know, network layer doesn't know what is FTP. All layer 5s understand that if it is FTP, this is what I'm supposed to do. At the transport layer, we have TCP and UDP. Those are the major protocols of the transport layer. At the network layer, we have IP. All the network layers understand IP or internet protocol. So it is my earnest request to you that everyone please be clear with how data flows, which are the layer names, and which are the basic responsibilities of all the layers. Remember that by heart. Learn that by heart. Afterwards, we are going to learn them in detail and then it will come naturally to you. But currently, if the overview is clear in your head, then it will help you a lot. Do we have any questions so far? No, those are not required. Protocols names are not required at the moment. What is required for you to understand is that some protocol are understood by layer 3. Then all the layer 3s understand same protocol only. And layer 4 have no idea about them. Layer 2 have no idea about them. And no, there is no exception in layer 3 that which understands a different protocol. All the peers understand the same protocol. That is the idea. Like all the students do the same job. They study. They write journals, they learn the subjects, they do the programming practice and appear in the examination. These are your jobs, which you do. As faculty members, we are supposed to teach you, we are supposed to do some research and we are supposed to, you know, uh, place you and likewise. No, you need to remember them. You need to remember them. Of course, there is logic that how they are implemented, but that you will remember after, and that you will realize afterwards. Currently, I wanted to remember it because when I said who gives data to the network layer, unless you know the hierarchy, you will not be able to, you know, remember that. Afterwards, we will see that why application layer is placed here, why, you know, physical layer is placed here, and why before that we need to have the network layer, and above that, why do we need to have the transport layer, that we will understand afterwards. But currently, you need to remember jobs of each layer and the names of each layer. Ask me if you have any other doubts, any one of you. So is it good so far? Okay. Now let us say, we said here, what manager says, I want to have a meeting tomorrow. What this one does, he types the message that, dear this, can we have a meeting tomorrow at your convenience from this? And then that letter is given to this one. This one folds the letter, put in the envelope, write down the address and give to the courier. That means at each place, data is processed, some task is done. Some is passed on to the next layer to be attempted. So here we can say that our application layer wanted to send message. Message is M. So what transport layer does that message is intact and it adds header. Header means some additional data. It could be let us say parity bit. Of course, there will not be parity bit. But just to make you understand, I'm telling you that. Like whether data is correctly received here. How can we know that? If there is a parity bit 
and then we can detect one bit error so something will be added over here at the transport layer that header of the fourth layer header of tcp or header of udp because those two are the transport layer protocols will be added here please do not worry if you don't understand name of the protocols and if you do not remember that is perfectly fine at the moment because for the entire semester in this course we are going to do this currently i want you to have the broader picture clear in your head that is the idea so it is given here then at the network layer this message might be divided into two parts like message 1 and message 2 then header and part message that will be one part and rest of this is the second part because when network layer receives this header 4 and m then for this it doesn't know that which was added by this and which was added by the upper layer for this everything is data i hope you realize that actually the bit string will be passed here 10101010 etc so network layer doesn't know that where the header ends and where the data starts what does network layer know that transport layer has given me this data i should send it to the other network layer so it will give to the transport layer that is what network layer understands like here when the receptionist is getting the letter then what she knows i have got the letter from this and this letter i'm supposed to pass to this one so she can deliver here he or uh, this uh, person is not aware of that some message was generated by this then it was typed by this what is done on the upper layer that is not known by this person what this person is aware of is that i have got this data and i'm supposed to deliver that to the other side similarly here are you getting what i'm trying to convey you that when h4 and m v is the external viewer know that m was generated by 5 h4 was added by transport layer but layer 3 or network layer simply knows that i have got data from the upper layer in which i am supposed to deliver it doesn't know that what part was added by this and what was the original message network layer is unaware of the presence of application layer in other words am i making any sense to you so now the duty of the network layer is to send this message what is the message h4m to the other side for that like at the network layer ip address will be added so header will be added in all the chunks like if it is one intact message h4 and m not necessarily it will divide in some condition it will divide we will see that when it will divide okay afterwards we will see that if it divides then header needs to be added in all the chunks if it is split into two messages then both the messages header will be added because in the network layer we write down the address like where this message should be going so that each of the because branch network no 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 it simply means that let us say okay first i'll answer chenil's question because three doesn't know that which is where is h4 and where is m it doesn't know for three it is simply bit string like let us say this h4 was 1111 and m was 1000000 so for 3 what it is getting is 11111100000 now it cannot send the entire message as it is so it has to divide into two parts so how does it divide that it divides like 11111000 that much is written here and rest of the zeros will be written here are you getting channel it is like let us say that ckb sir is saying that um let me think of a good example okay he he has asked me that in the sixth semester pass on the message that we have an expert session tomorrow okay 
that is what he is giving me that we have an expert session tomorrow so what i am doing i am first identifying that okay i have to send message to you like uh, i'll say that two sixth semester computer students who are going to pass in 2023 batch we have an expert session tomorrow of this subject and why is it important why you should be attending that and then at the end i'll say that okay this is from the head of computer department so i have appended something some extra information which i thought might be useful to you and i'm asking some person to write on the blackboard now on the blackboard there is only limited space so what he is writing first for him he doesn't know what was the actual message and what i have added for that person this entire is the message so what he is writing in the first part that two or six semester students computer batch 2023 pass out there is one expert session to more of this subject and now the board is full so what he'll do he'll erase that part and the second message will be written that it is at this time and this message is conveyed by head something like that so header was like computer department six semester student in 2023 which was appended by me but that does not need to be duplicated in both the parts am i making any sense however if that person who is writing okay on the blackboard the person is writing now if we are conveying daily such messages then there might be some confusion so what he is doing he is adding the date like 8th december so he will first write 8th december then my half message then 8th december and then my half message so that is h3 whatever is added by the person who is writing on the blackboard that is h3 so that will be repeated like date will be in both the messages so you know that this is the fresh message however the content which is received which is mixture of the source order and my order it will be divided into two parts because we cannot send in one part and because actually that fellow even not knows that what was the original message what was appended by the upper layer and so on what network layer knows is i'm getting this data and i'm supposed to send that i understand why there is confusion because we have written h4 and m but assume that this entire thing is m1 or let us say this entire thing is x for 3 so x is divided into two, half part and half part x1 and x2 something like that are we all on the same page so far okay so now bhavik uh when we, there is branch in this that does not mean that two receiver not necessarily probably uh, let us say let me just give you one fact like if we are using ethernet in ethernet we can not send more than 1500 bytes in one frame like when you are sending one data chunk you can not send more than 1500 bytes in ethernet why so that again madam will be talking to you afterwards currently except that you can not send more than 1500 bytes in the ethernet so now if here i am getting let us say 5000 bytes then actually framing is done at the data link layer but sometimes network layer due to some reason also think that okay let me split into parts which can be handled by this that is why it is decided so it is not the separate connection it is not for the separate receiver not necessarily this is for the same one but it is divided because due to some reasons we are unable to send the entire message at as, as it is Uh, does it make some sense okay so now network layer gives this part as well as this part to the data link layer now for data link layer this is one message which it is supposed to pass and this is another message which it is supposed to pass so at the data link layer data link layer is adding header as well as tailor all the other layers will be adding only headers while detailing layer its header as well as tailor tailor means at the end it will be adding something so this was the message let us say it is x1 so x1 is as it is then there is one header and there one tailor here it is x2 so x2 is as it is then header 2 and tailor 2 that is what is added at the detailing layer and then it is passed to the physical layer now please remember that physical layer does not add any header the job of the physical layer is to convert your data into binary signal 010101 it will check the physical channel 
that if physical channel supports that zero is represented by minus five voltage and one is represented by plus five voltage, then accordingly it will put the voltage levels here. If zero is represented by zero voltage and one is represented by five voltage, then accordingly zero one will be converted and it will be put in the signal form here. Whichever coding technique is adopted by the physical medium and based on the bandwidth, physical layer simply gets data converts in the appropriate binary form and then it sends. It does not alter the information. It does not process the information. It simply takes and forwards like the courier one. Courier doesn't do anything. It simply, you know, send that data, something like that. So all the layers add header. Data link layer also adds trailer. And physical layer does not add anything. Simply it sends data. And don't worry much about the physical layer because I would, you know, say that this is the or uh, prime area of EC people where they'll be dealing with the coding techniques and all that. So is the transmitter flow clear? Then we will go to the receiver. Okay. Then the data travels and then data is received at the receiver. So physical layer senses the voltage first. If it is plus 5 voltage, let me write 0, 1. If it is minus 5 voltage, let me write 0. Is it plus 5 voltage? 1. Plus 5 voltage? 1. Minus 5 voltage? 0. So it will collect the bits based on the sensing the channel. And then it will pass on that to the function where the data link layer is active. So it is giving to the data link layer. Now data link layer knows that this is header 2 and this is trailer 2 which were added by the other party because all of them function at the same protocol. Then do the same job. So what will it do? Whatever was added by the counter data link layer, it will remove this H2 and Taylor 2. That will be removed. And only this message will be passed to the upper layer. Similarly, it is getting the second message. In the second message, it knows that, okay, my counterpart, other data link layer has added this and this. So it will be removing that and it will pass this to the upper layer. Now, network layer knows that header 3 was added by the network layer. Because they understand the same language, they do the same job. So what he'll do? Whatever information is required, it will be processing header 3. Then header 3 will be removed. And then it will be given to the upper layer. Transport layer knows that, okay, header 4 was added by me. It will be having the port addresses. If you're curious, then it will check the port address. And according to that, message will be delivered to the application. So this application wanted to send M. Here M is given. It will never happen that H3 will be passed on to the application layer. It will never happen so. Whichever header is added by one side, the other side will be removing those header. It will be processing that. And only information which is, it has received from the upper layer, only that information will be passed to the same layer. So here it feels that like they are communicating with each other. Here they are communicating with each other. Here, they understand the same language, they do the same job. And similarly here, they do the same task. And all the physical layers do not alter, process or do anything with the data. They simply convert your data into binary and then in the appropriate voltage and signal forms based on the hardware which is supported, they'll be putting that. So ask me if you have any doubts or let me know whether you understood this. Do not worry about that. Why is it is split? Do not worry about that. Like there is something called fragmentation. So when we learn network layer, we will see that. In the network layer, we'll be spending, spending you know, seven to eight classes. So we'll see that. There is something called fragmentation. And why fragmentation is done, we'll see that afterwards. But that is done. So this is, you know, inter introduction is actually, you know, like uh, overview of all the chapters and where we want you to just know the how the data flows and we are trying to make it as realistic as possible. But it will be impossible for you to grasp all the finer details at this stage. Afterwards, you'll be very comfortable with this. So is it clear? Actually, application wants to send data to the application, but directly there is not how they are able to send. They are 
following this path to send the data and in between all the layers come they contribute one or the other way mm, okay so now let us say when we say that we design different layers okay so can you tell me that what care we are supposed to take to establish reliable and successful communication like there is one computer let us say here is one person and that person wants to send data to this person this person i hope you know where the cursor is this one wants to send data to this person so tell me what all will be required this white shirt fellow wants to send data, data to the one who is wearing this black jacket so what do you think should be implemented like now you are the designer you are designing a network or you are designing the protocols you are writing the networking module so what will be required can he simply said that this is my data and data should reach here okay so there should be link direct or indirect link between them that means preeti is saying that there should be some communication medium available without communication medium we will not be able to send data do you agree with that okay what else will be required now tell me now there is one wire let us say i am providing one wire directly here or let us say it is like this okay let us say this is double arrow it is like this whatever then is that all or do we require something else as well yes addressing must be given like i cannot say that white one is sending data to the black shirt it is not that so we need to say that this is a this is b c d e f g h i j something like that so unique addressing must be there yes then only that person should be able to get the data it should not happen that all others are getting that that means some kind of authentication should be required right channel you mean authentication by that like the person for whom the data is meant only that fellow should be receiving the data and no one else yes abhi then what he is saying is abhi is saying that reliable transfer if this fellow is sending 1 2 3 then this should be receiving 1 2 3 only data should not be tempered yes data should not be changed data should not be uh, missing data should not be duplicated or i cannot even receive 2 1 3 like data should not be out of order so reliable transfer should be ensured yes security must be given security must be provided like someone else will be reading the data changing the data and send it data should not be tampered with then can you think of something else so these are some of the issues which we need to uh, take care of currently we are thinking about the design issues like when we are having layers then which are the issues which we need to address and then we will place those issues at one or the other layer and that is how we'll come up with the module so think and tell me whether this is sufficient what we have talked about or we might need something else think for half a minute and let me know
yes like let us say in case if multiple paths are available then which path should be taken something for the routing must be done like if there are multiple paths available if there is single path available then probably you don't need to worry about that but in all the real life situations there will be multiple paths available so which path is good for this application at this moment it this network conditions that must be taken care of so routing should be done yes it could be depends like you know shortest path or what that depends on the application like let us say that uh, if i just want to send movie like if you are talking about movie transfer at that time that is okay if someone is buffering i might send a bit later but if i want to you know uh, deliver some critical message like there is a war going on and be immediately present here then we would the shortest path or uh, like quicker path and reliable path and if the shortest path is let us say passing through pakistan or some country we should don't want our data to be leaked to then probably we will compromise the shortness we might take the longer but more reliable path so there is no one should it fits fits all of them that depends based on the criteria but in short some routing must be done like which path is to be provided to the data transfer that should be done yes then transmission rate might match or somehow probably uh, we might be able to take care of that either transmission rate should be matching or probably uh, you should be able to provide some kind of synchronization between them then size of the message okay or rather hers uh, hers i'll put it like that like uh, transmitter should never be sending more data than what receiver can handle if transmitter sends slowly that is probably okay if it is sending at the speed of the receiver that is okay but transmitter should never be overwhelming the receiver transmitter if it is sending data at much higher speed than what receiver can process then we are in trouble would you agree with that okay so now with this let us see some of the network issues okay so here these are the mature design issues for the layers one is reliability when we say reliability that means you know reliability is used for multiple aspects one is for the data integrity which we have talked yesterday about i mean in the last class about that like whatever data we are sending data should be received without any error and if there is any error then we should be able to detect the error and we should be able to correct the error and reliability means routing like you said that there should be one path available and the path should be <coughs> secure if the application demands that so we need to go for the reliability then addressing must be done all the applications we should be able to identify uniquely then someone said that so that is about whether we are going for packet shipping or we are going for message or packet or how will be sending the data at which rate or what should be the packet size so that will be there and then our network should be scalable we cannot you know uh, have our protocol so stringent that they function for n number of users but if they increase to n plus 5 then if it doesn't work then that is not what we want because in networking we know that you know devices are exponential increasing who are on the internet so we want our network to be reliable uh, and not sorry we want our network to be scalable like the protocols should withheld even if number of users are technically infinite then resource allocation like we know that network is a shared resource it is not so that there is one dedicated line between you and the receiver 
that is never going to happen we are going to share some data in between like the same line will be used between user 1 and user 2 and then user 5 and user 7 are talking to each other then the same line might be used so we have the shared resource so resource allocation should be done in a fair way then there is flow and congestion control like flow control is something what we have talked about that flow of the transmitter should be decided in such a way that it is never sending more data than receiver can process if receiver can understand 5 bits in a second then transmitter should send 5 or lesser if transmitter sends more then what will happen let us say your minds can process 20 statements in minute so if i try to speak more than 20 statements in a minute then what will happen you will not understand that you will lose the trick you will not be able to process that data right so data loss will be there if your transmitter is sending more data than what your receiver's capacity is then there will be data loss and we will have to overcome that and for that what will i have to do probably i'll have to repeat the topic again so somewhere else, the transmitter might need to send it again so that it will be being inefficient so as far as possible flow control should be maintained so that remedy elections can be avoided that is flow control and there is something called a congestion control so congestion control is like our traffic uh, your roads can accommodate let us say if it is four way length the road then four cars can be going or four trucks can be going but if i'm having seven parallel trucks going there then we'll be having the traffic jam and none of them will be able to pass through if everyone comes that way so when number of vehicles exceed the road capacity then we have congestion similarly here your channel will be having some capacity but if more users are competing for that capacity simultaneously then there will be congestion so what happens in congestion data loss again might be there so we have to make sure that we are doing something for the congestion control as well so there are three things error control flow control and congestion control what do we do in error control what do you think we are attempting in error control error control is used to ensure reliability yes uh, actually shall you know uh, we cannot reduce the error however we can try to overcome the impact done by the errors what do i mean yes like when the data is traveling over the channel then we don't have any control over the channel like if it is a wireless channel then based on the weather based on the atmosphere your data might be changed that might happen that voltage level might be dropped if some noise is there it might be added something like that but we should be able to detect the error and we should be able to correct the error if we can do something like that we say we are doing the error control even the name suggests like that that we are controlling the errors we don't actually have any control over the errors however we should overcome the impact introduced by the error so in error control means data integrity whatever data we are sending the same data should be received we are ensuring that how like that if there are error we will try to overcome that through some algorithms yes like parity bit but parity bit is very you know simple and almost useless in the realistic scenario but yes there will be some algorithms used to detect 
so that is error control so tell me what is flow control now we should address error control flow control and congestion control because the words are slightly confusing i'm again repeating that and i'm asking you to tell me so i know whether you know what do we do in flow control if it is too long for you to type you may unmute yourself and ask yes to adjust our transmitter's speed or transmitter's flow according to receiver's capacity we keep in mind the processing power of the receiver and accordingly we send the data if we are addressing this issue we say that we are doing flow control nice and what is congestion control yes so whenever your channel is getting more data than it can process then your data transfer might be stuck or some data loss will be there so we are making sure that we have a solution to this condition so there are some mechanisms which prevent that like they make sure that we don't overburden the channel they try to to go for the preventive actions while some are there which are for the corrective actions like after there is congestion what should we do so that now congestion can be mitigated so all of that fall in the categ uh, category of congestion control so if i summarize it very quickly for you then in error control we talk about the data integrity that data is correctly delivered that is what we do in error control in flow control your transmitter is supposed to send data by keeping your receiver in mind in congestion control we look at the network capacity or the channel capacity that if that is exceeded then we might have some issues and how do we overcome that issues that we address in congestion control is this clear so far reliability then addresses are required network should be scalable our resources should be allocated based on the requirement and availability and apart from that error control flow control and congestion control have you all understood this so far okay then the next two are pretty simple quality of service should be ensured like see depending on the application again the quality might be different if you are talking about let us say chat application then in that time what is the parameter of quality quickness like if you are chatting then you don't want the other person to be waiting for you so you should be sending the data quickly then quickness is the quality parameter if we are talking about let us say at that time bandwidth is not an issue you don't need to provide very high bandwidth but if someone is downloading a movie at that time we want him to have the larger bandwidth if it is you know delayed by 5 seconds or 10 seconds that is okay but the amount of bandwidth which is required should be higher uh, if someone is watching the uh, someone is hearing to the live orchestra okay 
if someone is hearing the live orchestra the music is being played at that time we don't want any gap in between you know if the music starts after 5 minutes then i'm okay with that the concert might have started somewhere at 1 pm if i'm getting at 1 5 pm i'm fine with that but once it starts then i should be getting the soothing continuous voice so delay is okay but in between there should be no disturbance while if i'm transferring a file a very large file like i'm sending you 5 gb file of the report of last year at that point of time you know uh, what is important is the file should be correctly delivered that is important if there are some gaps in between like if there is one or two seconds delay in between then that is okay with us what i'm trying to emphasize here is quality is not same for all the applications based on the application application the quality which you are looking for is different so based on the service your quality should be given and then security i don't think we need to explain that when we say security then there are multiple aspects which are covered here and you will be learning more in nis about that like here we are having authenticity the person whom we are supposed to send is he only getting the data then that is authenticity then data integrity can also be part of the security then no one else should be getting the data that also should be part of the security in data should be in the encrypted form like if i'm sending the data sometimes i'm okay with others reading that as long as the receiver is getting the correct data i'm fine that could be one aspect sometimes the data is secret that i don't want like my passwords or otps then probably i don't want you to access that then here secrecy will come into the picture as well so in security secrecy authentication data integrity etc might be covered so these are some of the issues which we have to address ask me if you have any confusion here see if you don't ask then i'll assume that everything is fine okay so that's it in the introduction chapter and oh, madam will start with physical layer i'll start with detailing layer so before i begin detailing layer i want you to tell me that who provides services to the data link layer what okay physical layer at the transmitter and what about receiver who provides services to the data link layer at the receiver yes that is physical layer come on i might be asking this at 3 am in the morning by waking you up but you should always be replying that lower layer provides services to the upper layer however data flow will be different who gives data to the transport or oh, sorry data link layer at the transmitter at the transmitter who gives data to the data link layer network layer and who gives data to the data link layer at the receiver physical layer whom does data link layer give data at the transport uh, at the transmitter whom does data link layer provide data at the transmitter physic no physical layer data link layer provides data to the physical layer and whom does data link layer pass data at the receiver network layer perfect so as long as our data link layer is concerned i can say data link layer provides services to the network layer there is prime responsibility of the data link layer and what does data link layer do data link layer does framing error control and flow control we are going to learn all these three second third and fourth in detail in coming classes the first one should be instinctively very clear to you that data link layer provides services to the network layer 
it utilizes services of the physical layer apart from that it does framing error control and flow control what is meaning of framing that i'll tell you afterwards we already know what is meaning of error control and flow control how do we achieve that that also we will be talking about later on so we will just begin the detailing layer i would request you to or read about basics functionality basic functionalities of all the layers like which is job of each layer be clear with that and how the data flows at the transmitter and receiver once you know that i think our path is very clear and comfortable uh, do we have any doubt so far okay in case of no doubts thank you i'll end the meeting